why they changed the relief line was going under the river is so deep and it's so expensive. And when you think about, you know the Overly Bridge? It's way bigger than our little bridge here on Queen Street. So going under the river at the Overly Bridge, again, very expensive. So they're hoping to cut the cost by going above ground, across the rivers, but they have not done any of the technical work to do that. So that is going to be, they're hoping to get go very quickly, but since they're a secret organization, Metro Links is a secret organization. It is. It's a secret organization. It's terrible. Uh, unlike the TTC or the city, but um, we won't really know. But Peter, at that point, will be steering the boat and making sure they're out here at meetings outside, I think, of all the EA meetings that they're required to do to answer all of your questions. Not right away. Oh, you'll see it. You're pretty young. You'll see something, hopefully, unless you live in Scarborough, because they're <coughs> never going to have it. Yes, here's the map. Here you've got your map. Do you want to come to the demonstration? Have a look here. Are we don't, yeah, those are all questions for your environmental assessment. They're not tonight's questions. Tonight we're dealing with the impact of above ground tracks through the neighborhood, probably about a kilometer and a half, two kilometers. That's going to, you know, did you sign your name? Can you sign your name there and then we'll let you know when that one is? It's out just at the door. Sign up on the sheet. Uh, Carrie will help you. And then when those meetings are on, that probably is the one that you want. Go ahead. No matter what you submit, as it says here, always copy me and copy the mayor sure. so that we know what's going on out there and how many people are ready. Right Send as many, don't be shy about copying everything and everybody, even individual members of the executive. I'm going to come to you in a second. A second okay. Well, we'll call you. We'll give you a call when that you'll get it. You'll be informed when that meeting's going to be held. This is a different meeting. Okay. It might, but we don't know. Nothing's been planned yet. Okay. I don't know. This is this is about the neighbors and what's happening with the tracks. So that's what we're doing tonight. But here's a card. You can call Nick. Thank you. I, I, I just want to say um, thanks for both of you to you know, organizing all of these meetings on our behalf. I also want to say thank you, Paul, for being so clear and articulate about what the issues are and the history. Really, really important for everyone. The third thing is um, I know the CACs have letters because I know that nobody wants to start drafting a letter. And I'm hoping that if we can send the letters maybe to your office and they can be distributed for people to have a look at. That would be um, helpful. About letters? Yeah. It's really important that they're um, not one form letter. Okay. Fair enough. But people so I understand. Question. That's why we have these lists here. <laughs> that is, I live along the tracks of the new Ontario line, pr proposed. And here are the things I'm concerned about. I want you to protect our neighborhood. So I think the notion of protecting the neighborhood is something the city has to be told to do. And how are they going to do that? So it seems easy to have one letter. But once that happens, I look at that, and counselors look at that and say, oh, that was easy. They're, they don't really care. So if you really care, you're writing a letter about why you care. Yes. Oh, here's the, the mic. You want them to be unique in each individual? Yeah, they don't have to be. Yeah, it has to be from you and why, and you're living here, and you know this and that. Yeah, that kind of thing. Go ahead. So, I was just going to say that as well as it being about our neighborhood, though, I have to be careful that it does not become an issue. Because 
That's true. Yes. Can somebody write that down there that we have it on your sheets because you're going to take them back. It's always important to say we're pro-transit, we support the relief line, we're looking to get moved faster, we want relief, but we have issues with the Ontario line being above ground in our community. For these reasons, please help protect our neighborhood. So I think thank you for pointing out where are you. Thank you very much because it's a very popular project. At the back, well, you do because it's being taken. Okay, I'll repeat the question. If some of the houses are designated or, or streets historical, does that have any impact on stopping this? If some of the houses are designated historic streets or heritage street, does that have an impact? Not necessarily. The answer is there's no impact for a heritage home. If the first thing to do is try to get the city to support protecting the neighborhood, either with massive 50 foot walls or underground, whatever has to happen to protect the neighborhood because of all these issues while we support transit. When they build anything, whether it's underground, above ground, just as we know from Carla and other uh, hey, they go to every house, they take pictures of your house, they show what it looks like, and then if something happens during construction, then they're responsible for that. So there are many procedures here around building, and that's how it works. Yes? Going to roam. Okay, the roamer. Hello, Hello. Sorry, Rome. See, it's very loud. When in, when in Rome. <laughs> um, uh, uh, on the question of add anything new, um, does the issue of P3 come into place? Because I know you say we support transit. We should be supporting public transit and not private transit, which the P3 would be. And in relation to the P3 development, when you talk about construction issues, having to deal with SNC or whoever it is, Ellis Don or whoever it is who gets the contract. For that? Pardon? <laughs> SNC, are they going to get the green light? Probably, the probably SNC. So whoever it is, right? Um, Dealing with private construction companies under a P3 over development is going to be a damn sight harder and less accountable than if it's a public development. So please do not lose sight of a public transit as part of this, right. Right? the language, and B, we do not want a P3. So you know what? That's, I'm going to say this, that a construction mitigation plan, so all we're doing here from the neighborhood side, from the protect the neighborhood, I'm going to talk about protect the neighborhood from noise, frequency of trains, the vibration, protecting the city from a bad deal, I think that's the P3 part, that's it. It, but, but you can do one or the other, so if, I'm telling you, when you're making a deputation, you can spend your time on the P3, which some people will, or you can spend your time asking for neighborhood protection. We support transit, but you have to protect the neighborhood. Two separate things. No, I'm just telling you. I'm letting you know how it works. You might not like it. You might think it's goofy, but that's how it works. Because um, you want, if you live on the track, you want those counselors there to support protecting our neighborhood. Others are going to be there talking about the P3. You can throw in you don't want a P3, but you can't spend your whole time on the P3 or half of it. I'm telling you. And I'm going to try to ask, then you have to ask, 
for the construction management plan. And that's something in the amended EA, which means that no matter what, speak, let's say they proceed in some way with this, that there is an approved construction management plan with all of the things we would do normally for construction, whether it's the developer, whether it's the city, and there's a lot of bells and whistles on it. So I've written that down here, construction management plan, because you're concerned about how they would build it and never being able to reach anybody when you call. So that is an important part. I agree with you. So everybody write that construction management plan. That's one of your asks. I was just asked, sir. What was this one? Okay. Very loud. Um, I have two questions. One's sort of simple and the second one's about mobilization. The simple one is, it's probably too late for the October 23rd, but is it possible to look into impact studies on property values in places like Chicago, where you have trains like this running through the city? I mean, I think those trains probably came along before the residential, as opposed to what we're doing here. But is that something that can be looked into? Because there's a lot of houses that are going to be affected by this, and we don't want this to turn into like a ghetto because everybody moves, basically. Um, you can ask for any, but honestly, I think the city isn't, that's something in the environmental assessment, the amended one, that they should give you. Or so this isn't something you can ask for, this is something we have to ask for. I think that there's two tracks here, getting the city to support that property assessment. That, I, you know, it's one thing you can add that as a new thing. If that's what people are concerned about, then that's what they have to say they're concerned about, having that above ground running right beside them and the impact of it being so close. And that's fair. That can be added on that list. Okay, my second question is about mobilization. And if you're gonna answer this at the end, then I'll wait. But all the things that you're adding to this list of things that we're talking about, there's maybe 10% of the people being affected by this in this room. So I don't know what the goal is at the end if we're all gonna go out and talk to our neighbors, but a lot of people either don't know or couldn't be here. So all these points that you're listing are now limited to this group of people. So are we gonna talk about how we disseminate this information? Is yes. that part of the plan? Yes. Okay, then I'll wait until then. And all of these materials will be emailed to everybody who's on all of the list too. <coughs> Mary Susan, who's next? This gentleman okay. here, and then this gentleman, and then somebody who's here, you, and then him and then him. Hi, I, uh, I just wanted to mention a point that I haven't seen brought up uh, significantly, and that's the fact that the, one of the bigger changes of the Ontario line is that they're proposing a completely new, un, unspecified vehicle. And uh, a part of that would be the fact that they would require a whole new yard. Uh, I, I agree with the uh, train yard. Would no, be. no. Look on this map. Oh. The train yard that's being proposed, it's not on this map, but it's on in their business case. The train yard is being proposed up at the very top at Eglinton, oh. where uh, the so government owns Science Center, so they're proposing it there. Okay. So that, that confirms that there would be no partial opening to this Ontario line. It would have to all open simultaneously. It would all have to open because they're using a brand. They cannot, be, that, and that's a really interesting point. You can't get one section open and wait. You have to put it all together. And uh, I think that's a really interesting thing to raise up is the time because this, this section is pretty well ready to start. And they'll, anyway, they'll finish it all, I gather. Uh, the trains would have run, the subway trains would have run over the Greenwood Yards. Yeah. Now there'll be a, probably a hundred trains that will be parked and maintained up at Eglinton and John Mills. That's Hi, I uh, I just 
be uh, another potential uh, issues we could add and kind of questions tag along with that. I'm a pediatrician. I live on the roof. Um, my kids and a lot of the kids in the neighborhood are at the age of the same sort of playground all the time. And it's the uh, part of that park that is most heavily populated, at least by humans. Um, <laughs> and it's right against the train track. And uh, for those of you that spend any time in Jimmy Simpson Park, uh, the moment a train goes by, any conversation ends for the duration of the train. Um, it seems to me that with the frequency that trains would be running, that park would become, that playground would become a wasteland because of noise pollution. Um, so that would be another issue to add. I guess it falls under quality of life. Um, but I feel like the fact that it involves the children of the neighborhood is uh, an angle that we should uh, investigate. And it also makes me wonder about whether that, this is probably something I should know, but whether there's um, any kind of children's interest groups or boards or committees nested within the city that we can also be making a case to. The only uh, other plan when this is done is to look at public health, talking about the job noise, the quality of light, the measurement of that amount of particulate from that many trains is really a loss. But I did, you just raised a really exciting idea. They're going to be sitting there going, oh yeah, a few videos of those trains running very close <laughs> to your home, running through the park, would be great. So that's part of that organizing is who can take couple of videos and when you come there you're showing what life is like with this frequency not with three more tracks
renaturalizing that. And then we have Corktown Common and Parkland north and south of the train line. So it's, it's, a, it's a problem all along the line. And um, I also wonder, this is probably something for the EA, but thinking about construction that would also include community benefits at some point should be involved somewhere. That would be a metro lens negotiation. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, the city yeah. can't require it. I mean, thinking no, about no, the, the city, city can't require it. No, they can recommend. But MetroLink actually has community benefits on. I know. Roads. I know. I know. We have to. We have to just make sure that if that was then under a friendlier government, um, and also fair integration. Like we want to see this line fully integrated with TTC owned, operated. And uh, same fares, so that's not and maintained, and it's not clear at the moment that that's the plan. Yes, so that's right. So, um, well, I'm going to call those the big pictures, and then there's the neighborhood. I'm going to divide up. Who's willing to go and make a deputation on the 23rd? Let's see. So, I can't see your hands. Okay, we're going to get all of you together in one place. And that's for the local, right? Who wants to make a deputation about the big picture? P3, community benefits, uh, public realm, the kind of big things you do. Anybody else that can put your hand up? Because you're going to be in a, you've got to talk about that. You're there, you're supporting the neighborhood, but you also want to raise these other issues that are very important. Somebody get this person had a question. Oh, sorry, oh. you got the mic. No? Yes, I, I got the mic. Um, first, I'll start by echoing the earlier speaker uh, who thanked you for your, both uh, Paula and Peter, for your active involvement and attention to this issue over the years. So, uh, your, your, hard work, your hard work is noticed and appreciated. Um, on one of the issues on sort of uh, proximity and construction and impact on the community, on the neighborhood, I, I'm a bit un, uh, confused, maybe I'm just behind, about the six lane, six tracks. Mm -hmm. When the whole vision, if the whole vision were implemented, you said there were going to be six tracks, and I think the way you described it is they would sort of all be on the same level beside each other. And so the, the underpasses at like Girard and I guess Dundas and I guess Queen All Street them, East yeah. would be at least double as long as they are now. So I'm getting visions of like walking downtown underneath Union Station and the way <laughs> that sort of divides the downtown from, from the waterfront. I, I've also heard, and maybe this is just a rumor, that um, there could be four tracks on sort of the current level and two tracks built above it. Yeah. Is that just totally fake news fantasy that I heard at the pub one night? Was it on the truck there? <laughs> if it is, just say so. I don't know. So can I, I'm just going to speak briefly to the point you raised. Yeah. The, currently there are three tracks on the raised rail bed that goes through this community. The Regional Express Rail proposal that the Community Advisory Committee and others have been dealing with would add a fourth line, um, which would not actually make the overpasses at Girard, Logan, etc., bigger than they are now. There's enough space for a fourth line. If they add two more lines, then I can't see how they wouldn't expand them. They would have to expand them. Um, we don't know how much that would be. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it would be like Union Station, although some days I'm sure it would feel like it. Yeah. Uh, but Paul is quite correct in terms of an ele elevated uh, Scarborough rapid, rapid Transit like line. We simply don't know. <laughs> At this point, until. Ask if the right of way is big enough to accommodate all six lines all the way through. We don't know at this point. We haven't seen, and no one has seen, any detailed engineering assessment. So I'm sure there are sections where, yes, there would be room. But beyond that, no. No one knows. They don't know. The planners don't know. Metrolinks doesn't. Yes. When we write our, our letters uh, to 
Council? Is there a is there a point in addressing or asking or pushing for a, uh, a more comprehensive environmental assessment? I, I kind of heard you say that was more of a Metrolinx issue. Or something. The environmental assessment, there's a, it's a transit EA called a TPAP, and that is what was used for the relief line, and that's what they'll use here. Now, they will be very fast at that. The TTC was able to be slower and have better decisions, but it's totally within Metrolinx's jurisdiction. So I don't think there's a lot of ability to impact that. Through, through city council, you mean? Through city council. Peter well, what, what about in general? Well, skipping the city council for a moment. Then. Yeah. Well, how, it, it just occurs to me that with the expansion of the, what, it, what we call the RER? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then this. It's, it's the same damn line, right? But a lot of different things going on. But a total disconnect between the environmental assessments. Yes. So how do we how, how do we get that addressed? It is going to be very difficult to get it addressed. The transit project assessment process is a streamlined process to try and get transit going as quickly as possible. That was the original idea when it was brought in. I have not consulted with a lawyer on this. Uh, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get any substantial change on the section south of Girard, but the section north of Danforth, for instance, it's just going to be the transit project assessment process, the TPAP. Well, it's going to be a shambolic of that, should we get a lawyer? Because that's, I mean, what I'm hearing is that there is no environmental assessment. Well, uh, the, the no. issues you're talking about here around children in parks and all the rest of it, how does that get addressed? It should be addressed in the transit project assessment process. That is where it should be addressed. And legally, there is not a mechanism to move it up to, sorry, I shouldn't be definitive about that. I think it would be very difficult to move it up from a TPAP process to a full environmental assessment. And I think it would be very difficult to make the argument that you should move it up. So it's so, so don't focus there. It's, the... it's a focus process, and I don't see how you would win bumping it up. Okay. Uh, well, it wouldn't be bumped up. A lawyer might be able to require that the two environmental assessments, because there's one underway now by Metrolinx, and now they're going to amend, uh, amend an existing environmental assessment to add a corridor that's under a current environmental assessment. So it's on, it's on a lawyer, but at, at what point do you challenge that it's bad law? I would, I would think that's worth looking at, okay. uh, and Peter's writing that down, because you're now piggybacking a second on one that's existing. How are they gonna combine that? And I think that's an important point. I, I, I'm adding that to the okay. list, uh, our list here, because when you think about it, that's the current situation. Well, that, that's just a, it's a around kind of, Oh, by the way, back to your, your question around the yards. Um, the business case says that the yards are going to cost about 30 to 50 percent less to maintain than the ones with the city. How that's going to happen with a new yard, that's mystifying to me. But that's that's some of the substance of the business case that's really missing. So you let's mean, not lose the business you mean case. The trains are going to cost less. The, the cost of that yard to maintain is, in the, in the business case, published is substantially less than the RER line would be less to maintain. There's a lot of flaws in that business case that remain unchallenged. Sure. And Maybe. I'm not sure, I think that will be, the yard will be part of the environmental assessment. Yes, yeah. the, the one at Leslie and Lake Shore. Else. Who's three more people who I know? Four, five. <laughs> uh, so before people, yeah, just I'm just going to ask before people start leaving. Um, there are people here that aren't from the line. You're a pay, you're a pay, relief line guy. Carlaw, Carlaw line. You're a Carlaw line. Support Carlaw line. Yes, that's correct. But it would be helpful for you to say that was great. How the city. Yes and support the neighbors in protecting this neighborhood. Because this is another crazy idea. Crazy idea was paid. This is another crazy idea. 
and whatever you can do would be helpful. And all the neighbors that are on the team, as part of, uh, you know who you are in this room. Okay. Uh, so maybe a multi-part question. I live right on the line, so I went up there. There's not room for six. I measured there's not room for six tracks. There's room for a fourth. Um, so my house is going to be compromised either way. What What is a better fight? Like fight to have it go underground or fight for sound mitigation? Or like should I just fight to have it underground? Is that the... Or do I just throw everything at them? Or is it better just to point it direct at one, at like, get a wall, let's have sound mitigation. Is, is the... Is it feasible to fight this up, like overground? The um, let's just the city can suggest it goes underground. They don't have to listen. There can be requir requests to if should it go above ground that all these conditions would have to be met. I think it's not bad to have to be wrong. But you live right on the line, so your backyard, the train, the video on your phone. You name it, you do it, walk up there, show that. It would be, the tracks would be where they're on that embankment. You know that embankment that comes from, that would be where the uh, Ontario line would be going. So you're very clear, you'd like it underground, but my God, if it's not, then what's required? And I think your pictures from your homes, rather than just talking, be visual, show, show what that's like. So. Were you coming to make a demonstration that day? Okay. Will you take the pictures and show them? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. If they're really great pictures, a picture is worth uh, quite a few minutes, actually. Hi. Um, I just been wondering how many people in this room were around for the Get Out the Lead project? Because with all the particulate matter and their delay in getting rid of the diesel, I can see in 30 years that we will have a massive cleanup all along the line. And I think that this should be pointed out. Thank you. We're going to take a few more questions and then we're going to get into our groups. It's I have one, two, one, two, three. Five. Lynn's been so patient. We're going to let you wrap it up. I'll be really quick. My name is Sheila. I'm here from TPC Riders. We're a transit advocacy group, and I mostly came to listen about local concerns. We will be bringing people on October 23rd. Oh, this is loud. I just want to say that we have a huge opportunity. The city has not agreed to approve this project or put in billions of dollars. That is what Ford wants from the city. And not to get anybody's hopes up, but this is our big, big opportunity to not just um, ask for what we want locally, but the big picture to say this is delaying transit by years. And so I just want to invite people to get the bigger context if you want to learn more about some of the arguments we'll be making to go to ttcriders.ca. And you can be part of that bigger picture. Yes, and you have that. Great. Because you're so patient. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Um, at the earlier meeting, um, we talked about that um, we would be putting um, a motion before council. Is that at the executive or at the bigger council meeting? Uh, depends where, I'm not going to move it at executive, it was just going to die there. Okay. It's all tactical. Okay. And can you share with us what the main points of that would be? Well, it'll be to go underground, and if you can't go underground, then you have to protect, to protect the neighborhood. I think the main theme, our main theme has to be we love transit, yes. you have to protect the neighborhood. That's the city has to be an advocate to protect the neighborhood from all these different things. And then best if they put this back underground, they are not going to, in my opinion, they are not going to go back to the original relief line, only if they find they have to, but not because we push them, believe me. Because we're dealing with Duff Ford. So I don't care. If you want to go down there and say that, you can say that. But that is not how we can get the city behind local people along the line. Just going to tell you. Because the government's already said, we're done. But do you think, yes, they backed down across Ontario because parents in the 905s. Do you think they really care? Well, 
about a small two, two kilometers? No. So we have to find a way to get on the radio. So it's very complicated, political, but I'm going to let you say whatever you want at executive. You go ahead. Um, but I don't think we should all go down that route. If you all want to go down that route, go ahead. But it won't help me move your case forward. I need to be clear on that. I won't. Hi, just a couple of questions. Yes. Um, it seems to me this week from what I'm seeing on TV is that what we really need to do is get Meritorious to say no to all of this. Because what has come up is, I'll give you back the subway, you give me the Ontario line. So it seems like we should be putting as much pressure on yeah. him as possible. Yeah. Right aside, aside from the next, the 23rd, which I'm, I'm going to go to, I've been receiving letters from Sheila. I got something from you today, uh, an email, yeah. an email the mayor. Uh, Peter, you had sent me a, a, an email with a letter that went to Carolyn, Carolyn Mulroney and Doug Ford and John uh, Tory and a whole bunch of people. Like, are we going to still send these things out in addition to our own personal letters? And the third thing is, how do we make even more noise and get media attention to that? Because I've spoken to you about that, Peter. And I emailed Toronto Life and they didn't write back. I can help with yeah, that. Yeah, we asked you to help with that. I can help with that. So I'm just thinking, like, last meeting someone said the autism community got what they wanted because they got out there and they protested and they I got their voices heard. And I, I want to be clear okay. because if you want to be on the big picture, I'm just going to be clear with you how these things work. That was an Ontario-wide fight. It wasn't a two-kilometer rail fight. Right. On a line that everybody wants in this city on a line where all the poor people up at Thorncliffe Park that have no transit, they want this line. But we don't want it elevated in our neighborhood houses. That's fine. So that's you're fine. gonna come down and say that at executive. That's right. fine. They they have, that's fine, yep. thank you. So you're gonna be there locally for your neighborhood. You don't want an SRT in your neighborhood. We don't want an SRT in our neighborhood. We want transit that works in our neighborhood. Right. So that's why this is kind of a crazy idea. <laughs> At the end of the day, the city isn't building this. So you have to be able to show that what's being planned in our neighborhood, maybe Jay Robinson will come with you and help you, that that isn't going to work for the neighborhood, it's probably not going to work for the line, it's a crazy idea. And But because that's the bargaining that's going on, we sent the city manager to the province to say, negotiate to stop the upload of the entire TTC, right? They've gone up there, they've said, we're not gonna upload the whole, so far, we're not gonna upload the whole TTC, but we want your support on these four lines, Scarborough Subway, these four lines, and this includes this one. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a really hard fight because we're really not in a great position here. So we don't have any control of the city, and we want them to listen about the impact of running this on the rail line of what a crazy idea that is. That's really what that is, to try to get the city to support this community in negotiations with Metrolinx. Should we be putting pressure on the airport? That should we be... Mer no. The territory, sorry. <laughs> this is how we're going. This is it. We're starting here to put pressure on Mayor Tory by coming there, by the numbers, by the letters, by the acts. That's what that is. So we're going to divide up deputations locally, deputations big picture. Who will write a letter? Let me see your head. Okay. That's a lot of letters. Thank you. I know each and every one of you that put up your head. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Paula, and thank you, Peter, for organizing this event and for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And uh, I want to commend a lot of my neighbors for their comments, and I absolutely agree with your points as well. Uh, I was just shocked to read the article on the Star this week about the, you know, seemingly backroom negotiations between the mayor and the Ford administration. I understand that the city manager was sent to do a job and to try to get the TTC uh, protected and uh, maintained as part of the, uh, you know, uh, the operations of the 
proceeding. Uh, but it's invoking it appears that the province needs the support of the city. And it also appears that to be able to go ahead with the third line, the support of the city is needed, money from the city is also required, as I understand it, perhaps I'm wrong about that. But if that is the case, then it sounds to me like the city has leverage to be able to at least uh, impose conditions, or even perhaps say, we're not going to give you the funds that you require for the third line, in which case, you go elsewhere to find those funds, but until such time as our conditions as a city and a community are met, the Ontario line is not going to be made with our support. So I guess what I'm trying to... What you've, you've articulated that, and the only way that happens is if executive committee and the mayor and the council are convinced <coughs> of your arguments. Right. There's no other way for that. It's a small section of track in a big transit plan. So it, that is what has to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then it will proceed in that way. Right. right. So I guess what I wanted to ask you is this, whether it would make sense as part of this uh, coordination of efforts and as part of this division of labor with respect to arguments, whether it would make sense to perhaps devote part of the argument to attacking the very existence of the third line, in the sense that we shouldn't have it at all as it is currently set out in this uh, paper thin business case. If that fails, we should have perhaps uh, alternative arguments to the extent that if it actually gets built, then it should meet these conditions. But of course, for that to happen, the city would have to support it, it would have to provide, provide funds. I mean, I guess I'm just having a hard time accepting the notion that this is a train that has devastation. Uh, if, if I can be very quiet, I'll tell very blunt. Uh, I'm just having trouble with that notion. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to just roll over and say, yes, sure, I mean, Go for this uh, uh, locomotive That's fine. sorts. Let's just go to real life. There are three councillors who have the Ontario line in their wards. There are 26 councillors on council. So there have to be 14 votes and the mayor for conditions. And I don't know, I think your councillor's chair of the TTC, and maybe you've met with her, and maybe your neighbor has met with her, maybe you've had a meeting up there, or maybe you want to call a joint meeting of everybody on the Ontario line, because everybody will go to your neighborhood if that happens. But that's what we're faced with, having what is going to happen. So you have to have, for this section of the line, you have to have people want to help you. You have to have okay. a strategy. Can I just ask? I'm sorry, my turn, but it dovetails directly on. Is this the only opportunity we have to express our concerns? Hold on, let me just finish. Yeah. If the line goes forward, because I feel like this is Survivor and we're splitting our vote, and I'm wondering if we can just all focus on one thing now on the 23rd, which is we don't even want this, and then if that fails, the next time is there another opportunity? Then focus. Okay, we failed. So now this is what we want because we seem to be splitting this is, ourselves up. This is the city's role and the city's big report on all of the transit upload. This Ontario line and this section. So this is very big picture. Twenty third is the only opportunity. 23rd is where it's going to happen. And then they're starting the TPAP. When are they starting it? <laughs> December. So, so then when we have an opportunity at that point to express that's metro links, that's the province is taking it. So all we're trying to do here is get an oar in the water officially that the city is backing, protecting the neighborhood. That really is where that's going to go. You don't get it? I just don't feel, I feel like the, the, the feeling in the room is people want to know if we can go all in and just fight this or not. And you keep saying, like, I don't feel like we're quite... Uh, I go all in and fight it and tell me how that works. Sorry? Well, we get as many people to show up that day. Like, we're we're going to go there and say, don't build it, we don't like it. And don't say anything else about how it's going to impact you. No, no, that's what I'm saying. And then if we lose there, there's no other There's no other place. Back. That's it for the city. That's it. Well, I, I, kind of, well, I kind of want to speak to that as well. I feel like, from what I've read in the paper, Tory is, uh, you know, making a deal with the devil, and what we have on the other side is the deep blue sea, and so we're screwed no matter 
what it sort of feels like at this point. So one of the things <clears throat> it seems to me we can do is we can present on all of the kinds of issues, but we don't have to um, assume the Ontario line in our presentation. We can talk about all of the issues without saying, and you know, if you just put up a wall, it would be okay or whatever. We just say, here are some of the problems. And then the non-Ontario line also is still, we're not saying we accept the Ontario line. So we have to make sure we don't say anything. To You're going it. to the part where it's the big picture. Well, hold on, let me finish. And then, you know, I think about the Spadina Expressway, yeah. which mobilized the entire city yeah. because the issues are bigger than just where it goes. They are much bigger. Right. So we need to make sure, you know, everybody in the city was against the Spadina Expressway, even though it only went through one part, and they won. It's possible. Yeah. 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 That's a great point. <laughs> and everybody in the city wants the relief line. Yes, but, yes, line. but they want sure. relief. They don't, they don't know where it goes. They just know they want it. That's the same idea. Think about that. People out there, they are big. Relief line was Kevin Garner. I, I don't want to fight with you, but the fact is, nobody wanted the Superdine Expressway. Everybody wants the relief line. So that's one of our problems. It's very popular. But the fact is, the city needs to be asked, do whatever you need to do to protect our neighborhood from this new plan in running it above ground. If that is, you're asking for help. Every other, I think you should go in the one where it's the big picture because E3 don't want the Ontario line, it's stupid and everything else. I agree with all of that. It's not like I'm in favor of it, I agree with that. But realistically, in order to try to win a little help for the neighborhood, we have to have two tracks. It has to be protect our neighborhood. And if the mayor gets attacked and you're stupid for doing this and that, no, I'm telling you, I'm just saying. Well, that's why we have two tracks. There's a big picture thinking, and there's the local neighborhoods. And we're going to divide up. We're going to go to our two groups. We're letter writers at the back. In case you need help with the letter, we'll sit there and kind of here's the best way. Big picture here, and I don't begrudge you your big picture. I just know for people on the line, we have to try to make that the issue for this group. And the one date we have is that date. But I'm not telling you what you can or can't say there. I'm only telling you what I need in order to try to help you. That's what I need. Around 
procurement, talk about the issues around pollution, talk about the bigger picture issues that impact the whole community, not just the line. Um, people on the line, we can handle all that with our pictures of our kids playing in the park with your muffs on or something. Um, but really, 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 really try to keep it positive um, and bigger picture issues that don't come down to we hate this or this will be so terrible right here. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and my husband's a journalist and I read this one by him and he was like, media will love, 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 love the new week. Love the new week. The Toronto Star will just like want us all to the cover or arms crossed in front of the line. But that doesn't really help us. So the more if we accidentally slide into India, then that's where we'll get a lot of press, which makes them great, but long run that's not a great time. I want to add a, a little bit here. First of all, thank you for the offer about the media. You're right. We need to have as much coverage as possible on the 23rd. This needs to be an issue in the city as a whole. And your comments are really important. We will be isolated. We will be cut out if we're seen as anti-transit. And I increasingly, uh, people may have noticed this in social media. Um, people like John McGrath of TBO writing, I don't care what they do now, just build something. Because yeah. the frustration in the city over the gridlock is profound. And that's one of the difficulties that we have here. We have a council that is not particularly sympathetic. I have to tell you, having formerly been on council, often you're dealing with a very large block of conservative-minded people whose interest in our reality is limited. It is possible, I think, with the right messaging, to point out to them that neglecting or actually damaging this community, our children, and our future looks bad on them. And I think that's our best shot. The council, I don't know, Councillor, you can speak to your assessment. Um, this is not a particularly progressive council. You know? I, I know, I'm understating the reality. It is not particularly progressive. This is our best shot at pressing this council now to do something that will be helpful to us. We may miss it. Uh, we may miss it even if we do the best that we can with great communications, good media attention, and a powerful message in the meeting. We may not win them. I don't think that means it's over. We have a longer battle ahead of us, but it's going to be a tougher battle. It is very nice to have the city in your corner and to be able to cite their position as we fight them. Whatever the outcome of council in the next two months, we as a community are going to have to figure out how to make this a headache for Doug Ford and his government. Yes. And it is not, I don't have a fully formed plan to give it to you today, but as all of you in this room are well aware, Doug Ford has a credibility and a popularity problem. Yeah. And we need to work on that. That is going to be the only other tool we have after we work with the city. If we're successful, the city, it gives us a bump up. If not, we still need to fight, but it is a tougher fight. We need to illustrate visually, call it quite correct. Um, we need to illustrate the sound, the impact this is going to have on this community, and that no decent person would do this to a community. That seems pretty clear. But it is a longer term fight. This one is, uh, interestingly, an early good shot at moving our position forward. I think part of the difficulty we have, and I'll go back to this, we don't necessarily have a council of people who care about where we're headed. And I'm going to take Paula's advice on what is going to be most effective with this executive. She knows the players, and frankly, I think she's going to make the best call. So I, I would urge people to follow that strategy and be very focused on it. The other stuff, after the city's made this decision, going into a fight with the province, we can go a bit broader, without a doubt. And I just want to say one other thing. I, I can't restrain myself. Uh, understand that Metrolinx is a soft puppet, right? It is not an autonomous organization. Uh, when the Liberals were in power, they changed the whole structure of Metrolinx, so effectively, the Minister of Transportation runs Metrolinx. They're a front group, a sock puppet. In the end, it's Doug Ford and his cabinet, actually, it's just Doug Ford, um, that is gonna have to be moved on this, damaged on this, pushed on this, in order for us to get what we need. And, and that is gonna be the fight 
it would just be a tougher, sorry, it would just be a fight that's more promising for us if we have the city on our side. So those of you who have communications experience, if we could talk at the end of this, it's really important for us to get that message out for the 23rd, so this becomes the sort of thing that leads to the news that night. So, so when you said the city has to make a decision, what specific decision does the city make? They are going to have to make a decision about how they're going to be approaching this line, and my hope is that the, what Paul is bringing forward yeah. to protect this community is where they go. And I, well, the strategy and the fact that you can make it too expensive, you'll have to do too much to mitigate, makes it too expensive to build. Could be that. We will see. But I, I have to say to you, in this city, being an opponent of public transit is not a good thing. <laughs> right. No, but, but uh, I, I have to say, in my business, People take my words, they reshape them into a knife, and they stab me in the head. So, <laughs> that's the way it is, that's life. Yeah. So, be very careful with your words, because your message will be used against you unless it's shaped in a way that it can't be. That's good. I, I know a few of you want to speak, and I know it's getting late. Well, we have to get out of here, but we need to pull you together so that we can actually have an impact on the point third. And I know a number of you have to go and are going. If we can pull you together now, that would be great. That was that. Hey, some of you have now changed your mind. This coming here is the deputation for the 23rd, right here. We're just going to go over the point our neighborhood over here big pictures i need you to take video i need you to take pictures and you need to uh, take pictures of your kids and everything else coming over here uh, if you have a video we can run that at the meeting yes 